Today on Doodlebud, we are doing the first ever how-to series. Today's topic is going to be fountain pens on cheap paper. So in case you haven't noticed, I am my own graphics department. Pretty snazzy. So today's topic is just a bit of accumulation of using fountain pens for years. And my primary use of my pens is going to be on cheap crappy paper for work and business. So I just thought I've experimented through a number of years with different pens and inks and what works, what doesn't work. So here are just my thoughts and my findings. Maybe it saves you a little bit of time. Let's do this. So this is the regular type of paper I have to use a lot of my work when I'm using my fountain pens or doing applications for clients, whether it's investments or other things. And so it's really cheap paper. Um, you know, it's thin. I have to go through multiple copies, four copies in all. And I have to use an ink that's saturated enough, but I have to make sure the pen and the ink don't bleed and feather too much because, uh, you know, it can't look sloppy and I also have to scan it or photocopy it, sometimes even fax it because we still do that. So it really narrows down a lot of pens and inks uh, out of the equation to make it uh, compatible with this type of paper that I have to use all the time. So let's show you what I found as far as pens and inks because maybe you have to do something like this as well. So first, let me just show you what I don't get to use. <laughs> Any of these ones. So, uh, Visconti Homo Sapien. This is a fine, but no way. Even my uh, Pilot 823 fine nib, lovely, just too juicy. Even my Lamy All Star, extra fine, feathers quite a bit. My absolute favorite Mont Blanc 149 has a fine nib. I ground to a uh, cursive italic. I used to be able to use this, uh, but then I adjusted the nib because I wanted it just a little bit wetter. And it does write better, but now it's it's pretty much too wet for that type of paper. No, no, this is a Twisby Eco with a fine. Still no. And here's a bunch of other ones. So Flex Nib, no. Visconti, this is a fine, but way too wet. Lovely to write with, but no. Italic Broad, no. FA Nib on a, on a pilot pen. Heck no, absolutely not. Too wet. Just not a fan of it. Uh, Again, too wet, and it's a stub. Lamy Dialogue 3, my smoothest with a media nib. Love it, but no way. And even, we'll play with this and we'll see, but this is a Lamy 2000 Extra Fine. It's a sometimes. So here are most of the pens that I sometimes get to use. Uh, for sure, this is the Diplomat. It's got an Extra Fine, yes. Sometimes the Muji. It is a fine, but it's actually fairly wet, and there's still some stuff, no, but sometimes with the right ink. Pilot M805 Extra Fine, usually not too bad, but it, it is a little wetter. These two right now are my go-to. So the Faber-Castells with a fine nib, I find it's relatively smooth, right? But also not overly wet, and it's also firm enough of a nib too, but it'll go through the carbon copies. Uh, this is a Marta, Marta Modena Dolce Vita. Right now it has an Architect Fine Nib on there as well. It's not too bad. It's actually reasonable. This one's pretty good. It's a little bit too dry, but it does well on my garbage paper I have to do. But this is a Montegrappa Elma with a fine. Sometimes these ones. Uh, not very often. It's such a good pen, this Parker 51, but usually too wet. This one's not too bad, but still sometimes that happens as well. I'm just starting to play with this guy a bit more, getting more used to it. And again, sometimes I can, but it is a fairly wet writer for a fine. It's a superb nib. I absolutely love this pen. We'll try that out again, too, and we'll see what it's up. So the other half of the equation, of course, is the ink. So I need ones that are dark enough and not overly wet. So it works on the paper, but dark enough so it's legible. And I also have to scan it, sometimes make a copy, sometimes even fax it. So if it's a really bad paper... Um, it's not overly dark, but it's dark enough, and it's not too wet. It's a fairly dry ink, and then my Diplomat with an extra fine. This is the combo if it's absolutely terrible paper. Uh, another nice one as an alternative, if you don't want a black or a blue, is this one. It's a, it's a Jade Noir. It's also by Monteverde. It's a dark green. Um, so, yeah, it's fairly, it's fairly black, fairly dark, but a little bit green tinge to it, too. So if you want to keep it, uh, you know... Close to a black, but a little bit of flare. That's nice, and it's dark enough as well. Then I got some other Monteverdes. If you need a, you know, fairly permanent, this isn't as permanent as some other inks, 
but it does not too bad on, on cheap paper. They're documental blue and it's a you know reasonably priced ink as well. It's not overly expensive. The DC Super Show. So this is a really nice ink and it does not too bad on cheap paper. It has some cool shading and it's a lovely color. Also Aurora, I use the blue black, isn't too bad. Um, I haven't used just the blue or just the black. I've only done the blue black, but it does pretty well. The Robert Osters are decent inks, I find. I mean, just, just in general, but also with cheap paper, when I use the fine nib, it works not too bad. This is probably the lightest I go with, is the Fire and Ice. And then, but my other favorites uh, for a nice blue by them is the Lake of Fire. Again, there are other colors that work out just fine, I'm sure. I haven't used them all. But Lake of Fire, I also like Thunderstorm for something that's not quite a black. And then also River of Fire. These are my probably my two favorite right here uh, that I use the most from them, just because they're dark enough. And then finally, round, rounding it out, is some uh, Diamine ink. Uh, so the Midnight and Majestic Blue, they do decent. This one's got a little bit of shading to it. Uh, sorry, Sheen, and this one's got a little more shading. And they do well. They're fairly well behaved. Also, Sargasso C does well too. So again, there are so many more colors um, out there that probably do well, but these are the ones I've used. And so I can only talk to you about the ones I've used. So speaking of which, let's, uh, test some of the stuff out. Okay, finished the writing sample, but I thought before we do close-ups, you know, that's why these things exist, just this random ballpoint. Does it feel terrible? Yep. Is it fun to write with? Nope. Is the ink exciting? Uh-uh. But, you know, it, you can push crazy hard on these things, and they'll go through all the copies, no problem. Um... You don't have to worry about dry times and stuff like that. Even if you get it wet, you know, it's not smudging. If I do that on the other page, it's going to start smudging. So super cheap, you know, so reliable solution for what we got to do. That's why these things are here. But nonetheless, we like to use fountain pens no matter what, and we will not compromise. So let's go back to these writing samples and see how we're doing. Okay, so instead of just watching me write nonstop with terrible printing, I finished off some other ones, but let's just go through and see how we did here. So um, these ones up here, so that's the Faber Castell Fine, Diamine, Majestic Blue, does pretty well. You know, not too much feathering. You get a little bit of shading, which is great. The Diplomat Extra Fine, as you can see, pretty well behaved. And then if I really have terrible paper, I do have forms even worse than this. You can still get a little sheen on it, which is cool. But that's when I'll come in with the uh, the smoke noir. That will I should be fine on almost anything. So the uh, yeah, obviously a fine nib. You're going to do better. There's less ink going through. The M805 with uh, Robert Oster Fire and Ice. You can see. You know, it's really starting to push it. That's very saturated. The letters are getting just a little bit chunkier now. Uh, same with the Twisby Vax 700 with the fine. It's not too bad, not crazy feathering, but we're kind of maxing that out as well. Some of the stuff's just bleeding a little bit. Um, the Montegrappa Elmo is pretty good. That's nicely saturated. It's a dark ink. And it's not overly wet. We're starting to get just a little bit of feathering. Again, this is terrible paper, so we're still in there. Um, but yeah, so the Lamy 2000 Extra Fine, if you get the right ink in it, not too bad. But then one thing, though, since I have to go through a few copies, um, this one isn't as good at, at getting through multiple copies. Twisby Eco Fine, same with River of Fire. Not too bad, but again, we're sort of maxing it out. And then if we go to the Pilot A23, you can see it really starts to start smudging. Uh, and then there are other forms I use where this one just feathers and bleeds like crazy. Parker 50 or 51 with Fire and Ice, same thing, pretty saturated. We're kind of pushing it there before it starts to, to feather out. And the 149, I find the Super Show is actually not too bad with it, but again, uh, any more or any worse of paper and we're going to be you know bleeding through and having it look pretty fuzzy so 
there we go. Oh, let me zoom back out just to give you some thoughts. Um, if you are like me and you, you can't use really great paper, maybe you have to fill up forms, whether it's carbon copies or just it's garbage paper. Um, my go-to right now, these, any of these fiber castells with a fine are pretty good. They're firm enough that it'll get through, not too sharp and pokey to rip up the paper. Uh, this guy will be good with anything, especially with the right ink. But again, it, uh, it does sometimes rip through this fine paper. So you got to watch out with this one, especially if you have to apply pressure. Extra fine on this guy is not too bad. And uh, like again, every now and then I can bring in, say, a Lamy 2000, maybe this guy. Um, sometimes my Mont Blanc 149 and the Monte Grappa Elmo in a fine as well. So... I would say right now, these are my main ones I will use, and uh, sometimes I can pull this one off there as well. So if you're looking for, again, there are tons of other options. I can only speak from my own experience, but these are uh, some of my go-to pens when, I, when I'm doing paperwork, filling out forms, and I, I can't have too wet of a nib, and I got to have the right colored ink to respect, you know, looking professional, but also I have to scan it, uh, fax it, things like that. So it's dark enough on the imaging system. These are some of my go-to inks as well. So don't know if that helped or if I rambled on way too long. But there you go. Here are some thoughts because it took me a while to figure out the best combos. Maybe this will help you out. Catch you later. Have a good one.